welcome to Have a Chat. I am Veronique Arsenault, your host for today, joined, of course, by my incredible co-host, Judy Loche. Oh, welcome back, Veronique, and to our viewers. We've been uh, AWOL, I guess, for a while. <laughs> we have, so uh, the weather did not cooperate with us. No. We, no. So we took out, we were ended in December for our Christmas break, which mm -hmm. was fantastic, of course, and then uh, we were meant to come back a couple of weeks ago, but weather on Mondays, eh? Mm -hmm. Weather on Mondays is always tough at this yep. time of year. So we're here now. We're back and happy to have everyone with I us. Know, happy to be back together. Yes. Yeah. New and you year. look so bright and, you know. Cheerful? Yeah, we'll go well, with that. Well, it's a beautiful day. It is so a beautiful day. I kind of dressed to sort of, you know, suit my mood. Yes. So if it's dark, I'll wear black. I dressed cozy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to kick off our show today, as we always do, with our quote of the day. And Judy has a great one. Okay. I did pick up a short, sweet one. It is, we are all living in cages with the door wide open. And that is by George Lucas. Yeah. Um, George is an American filmmaker, of course, and, and well known for creating Star Wars and the Indiana Jones franchise. Mm -hmm. And I just thought when I read that, that here's a man himself that started off in 1971 um, with a film that, you know, was a bomb, basically, mm -hmm. under Francis Ford Coppola's direction. And then he... You know, he was sort of backed into that cage again because he was fearful, intimidated. Wow, I put out a movie. It was a flop. But you know what? He thought about it. He thought nothing's going to really stop me for the future. He got right back in, mm -hmm. and he went on to um, do American Graffiti. Right. Which uh, brought in $100 million domestically. So yeah. he stepped out of his cage, yeah. and he got back in, and he stepped out again. Well, and sometimes it's 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 scary, right? And that's, and that's what happens is that we get really comfortable because we know we're surrounded yeah. and and protected and then you think oh my goodness I can't actually get out there and do whatever it is mm. and I, I did have one of those experiences and that was actually zip lining in Vegas okay. so all the way up I was having a you know real real panic and dad's like are you gonna be okay I'm like no nope. oh. and then they strapped us in and dad's like well you know I think she's not doing well can we you know mm -hmm. can we get out and the guy goes nope hit the button and off I went right it was the best experience I was like Woo! the whole way down. Exhilarating. But it just, it took somebody actually booting me out of the cage yes. to actually enjoy it. And I think of people in that uh, frame, uh, we're all living in cages with the door wide open. We have so much opportunity, yeah. but because of being self-conscious or not uh, thinking we're good enough or strong enough or, or loud enough to use our voice to make a difference out yeah. there, that we hold back. Don't hold back. If you're wanting to do something, go do it. Yeah, do it anyway. Step out of your comfort zone. Do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Even if your voice shakes, they say. That's right. You know, do it scared, do it new, do it whatever, but do it anyway. But just do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have actually something special to share today. So the shopping uh, sh shopping channel, today's mm. shopping choice, mm -hmm. or TSC, the shopping channel, um, is celebrating the 100th birthday of Elizabeth Grant. So incredible legacy. Yes. She's still, still kicking around, Amazing right? Amazing woman. She started her multi-million dollar beauty empire in the UK in the 1940s. 40s. Incredible. I, beyond. Yeah. At the time, uh, she was working as a makeup artist at the L Street Studios in London, and she worked on many famous faces, including Vivian Lee, ah. Sean Connery, Ooh. Robert Taylor, and Noel Coward. Oh, Incredible. my. So soon, so many of her clients, as I'm sure they would be, were begging for her skincare secrets, and she refined her formula and called it terrific. Terisulum. Mm. I'm sure I didn't say that right, but that's okay. The business started in 1948 at a time when it was very unusual for yes. a woman to start her own business. So from us to Elizabeth Grant, a very happy birthday. Huge shout out to her. And thank you for all that you've done. You've got some, some oh, beautiful products there. We have some beautiful products that have been gifted to us. Oh, look at the fancy bottle alone. I know. Royale. My, my. We're going to even look better for the next show, Veronique. I hope so. It's Royale Imperial Honey Day Cream. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. We're going to look so young. Collagen reinforced. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. Bring it on. Yes. And then we have the, oh, an essence of um, Tereculum. It's a another cream. Can I, I bathe I, in it? Oh, my gosh. Like this from is, head to toe. What a beautiful gift yeah. that we were brought to today by our lovely producer and that uh, would be Sean DeLong from the Rogers. Mm -hmm. So Incredible. caviar, caviar hand cream. Giddy up. Oh my. Thank you, thank you and, and kudos to Elizabeth Grant and there's even more in that beautiful box of gifts. Imagine being 100. 
I don't want to. I don't want to mention that. <laughs> Imagine being 100. I, feel like I, 100. My, I need to bathe in it. If I, maybe it'll help me get to 100. <laughs> it's beautiful. Maybe it'll help me get to 100. <laughs> um, so a huge thank you there and a huge congratulations from us here at Have a Chat to Elizabeth Grant on her birthday, but also her incredible success and the legacy that she yes. has. Um, so we were just saying a little while ago that we haven't been back since uh, the holidays. No. And um, you know, there, it was a busy time, as it always is. How were your holidays? Very, very busy. I I spent it with a lot of family, friends. I really felt my home this year, well, you were over. Yeah. I felt that I had decorated it to be celebratory Beautiful. and cozy and homey and uh, just, you know, in the in the festive season, I felt really at peace and, and surrounded by prettiness all the time. Yeah. And I left my tree up until about the first week and then it all came down and then it's bare. Yeah. But you know what I didn't do a lot over Christmas mm -hmm. is take pictures. I didn't because I remember someone saying just live in just the moment yeah. and for the moment and watching you know the family open up presents and eating together and laughing. Yeah. Those things are often captured by me on camera because I love Absolutely. to share happy moments and their memories. Mm -hmm. But now it's all in my head and that's the first time I've done that in a long time. Aww. But then January, I just took that time to rest. Yeah. And I got kind of in a funk mid-January because I think it's just so, you know, there's so much snow and stuff, but mm -hmm. the early part's good for me. I get to relax yeah, and just push away any kind of obligations that I've yeah. had to really be like straight out for all of December. Well, and, and you do need a little bit of time to decompress, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, the year is so busy. Typically, most of, most of your time and my time same is, is quite full. Um, and so it's, yeah, I, I, I'm glad that you were able to take a little bit yeah. of time and, and to get that time to actually mm. decompress a bit. Oh, I loved it. There was days I did nothing. Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. I was a hundred. <laughs> you felt a hundred. Mm. Um, yeah. And you know what? I did a lot. I did a lot of the same. I spent real time with my parents. Yes. Um, you know, um, I, uh, mom's facing some medical challenges. So, you know, those are always tough. I know I have it right now and I'm really lucky and I'm happy yes. about that. I got to really spend some great time with dad too though. Oh, nice. We went to the World Junior Hockey um, tournament. We yes. went to a few games together and that was such an adventure. And there is nothing like a live crowd at an event. No, the, that's what gets them motivated yes. too. And then to, uh, get, you know, the final, the Canada, the big win. Absolutely. Oh, that was exhilarating. Oh, we were just, we had, I mean, we scared the dog when they <laughs> won. When yes. that final goal went into yes. Canada, the dog charged because oh. we were like, yes, woo. We were yeah. A bunch of crazy people in the yeah. room. Yeah, absolutely. And we were the same. So we had a really great time with that. That was his birthday present was to go to the, to the game. So yeah, we had a really great time with that. I had a bit of sadness over the holidays as well. Um, um, you know, we've, I've talked about my, my fur babies as, as you have, and um, you know, we made the really tough decision at the very beginning of January to, you know, to, to end Bud's uh, suffering. We didn't think he was, uh, you know, he was, he was uh, older, he was 15, and I've had him since he was three months oh, old, and so it was really tough, but I knew it was the right decision. But to be honest with you, Judy, I didn't expect to be as sad as I was. I knew I would be sad, but I was heartbroken well you know that I can absolutely 100% yes. relate to you yeah like absolutely relate I thought she has to be you know put oh. down to sleep diva yeah had her uh, I love her so much she's my girl and we said goodbye and then it just hit me yeah. it hit me and it's been hitting me ever since it's just it's, just, it's almost traumatic because they're family let's face it they're yeah. like little for angels with those wings tucked away you know they're and they spend like I mean they're with you for everything right hard, and and you know it's hard I've had him, like I said, you know, since he was a puppy, and so it was. It it surprised me that I was as sad as I was. I'm not typically like a a, a crier a lot, but I I, I spent a lot of time crying. I and know. the poor vet, you know, as I because I I was with him and um, as Bud went, but the poor vet was like, oh, what do I do? I'm like, you know, I just need to be with him. But Amen. so then, you know, in the we knew that Bud wasn't doing that well all fall, and we were kind of hanging on to him for a little, probably a little bit longer for ourselves than for him, but. We had kind of prepared um, not to replace them, but by getting another companion for Winston. So Winston is my one and a bit year old uh, multi poo, so sweet. adorable little fella, Precious. but just absolutely needs um, attention and and a companion, yeah, right? Okay. So I got a dog for my dog. So we had prepared in the fall to get another puppy. Mm -hmm. So the puppy arrived uh, a couple weeks ago. So he is so little Jude. Yeah, I met him yesterday for little, the first time. Little Jude. Precious. He is the smallest dog I have ever seen in my life. 
And myself too. I mean, I have a great big 65 yes. pound sheep a doodle and I know she would have her for an appetizer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she would eat yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So we did get Jude. I had hoped that, you know, he and Bud would be able to, you know, to meet and be nice. friends, but that we just didn't, couldn't hold on to Bud any longer. No. But so, uh, so Jude is a um, long haired chihuahua. Precious. And when he came to us, he weighed a, a pound. And he's still so, so minute. Tiny. But he, he is full of energy. He and Winston Aww. wrestle constantly. And they love each other. Well, I can't get another dog right now. No, I don't I thought him. about it last night for no. a good hour, and then I thought, okay, the hour's up. Don't do it, Judy. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. My no. husband said, you would love it. I said, yeah, but you're not here to help, so don't. It's a lot of know. work. No, I'm not. Yeah, Jude is a lot of work, and he's tiny, so I can't even imagine a larger dog. No. And same with Winston. Winston's only a year and a bit, and he's a lot of work. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I love them but both. Don't get me wrong. They but bring such joy. Yeah. And I, I miss Bud. I miss Of course Bud. you do. You, you know? always will. Yeah, because I miss. I, I could. I could hear his little feet yeah. uh, coming down the hall on our hardwood floors, I and I can't hear that it. anymore. I know. You know exactly. But anyway, other than that, listen. We had a wonderful uh, Christmas season, holiday season for us. Um, mm -hmm. But there was some uh, so some big news stories that have happened in January. Lisa Marie Presley. Yes, she. We Sad. lost Lisa Marie Presley. I, I just felt her whole life was that, actually. Mm. I know that she had some glorious moments mm -hmm. and some joyful moments, and she became a musician, and she would, became a mother and a grandmother and all of that. You know, she got to meet so many beautiful people along the journey, yeah. and her husband included. But she struggled so much. Mm -hmm. And I think being the only child of one of the, well, legendary, yeah, you know, world absolutely. icon, Elvis, if you don't yep. know the name Elvis and you're not quite awake, yep. um, you, you know, just to be an only child is maybe difficult in itself, as you would know. Mm. But to have the limelight on you oh, and then to lose your father constantly. and then to live that, uh, try to live in the limelight as his daughter and then to struggle with opioids oh, and yeah. then she passed away. And she um, lost her son a few years ago. She lost her son, uh, Benjamin, in 2020 to mm -hmm. suicide. She had a lot of struggles and personal demons and then Absolutely. she went on a huge weight loss journey to be looking good for the Elvis movie for the Golden Globe Awards so mm -hmm. she'd been they said they released information that she had been returning to opioids for which oh. she had been in rehab for previously and done well yeah and then the the weight loss was about 40 to 50 pounds to look good for her stage presence that's tough, it all huh? took a toll and then all, she had heart attack after that oh, that's tough that's it, it's sad sad for her mom sad for her kids you know, now it's legally, you know, a battle because they're fighting over the absolutely. document and money, money, money. Yeah, which it is what happens, it's right? It's sad. Yeah, no, it's really tough. And uh, she was lovely. Yeah, and you know, addiction is a tough road to hoe, right? Mm. And and mental health and and battling all of that mm. and and in the public limelight, I can't even imagine. Huge celebrity, yeah. Yeah. Very well known. Um, just actually, side note about mental health is. Um, uh, so we've talked a lot about it on the show here, but uh, locally we have mental health literacy that the mm -hmm. city is focusing on. There's actually going to be a community session next Monday. Wonderful. Yeah, it's going to be um, Monday uh, the 6th of yes. February from 6 till 8 at MVHS. Okay. And it's uh, John Fletcher, who's yes. been a guest of the show, so cool. uh, will be doing the com community component of mental health literacy, which is the next step in our in our strategy. Uh, that's really good news for you. Yeah, really happy about that and looking forward so to the session. So please, people, get out. That's so much you know we need your presence we need your attention absolutely. to this matter absolutely mm -hmm. um and you've been reading a great book no actually i am going yet? to i'm yes. going to yes. my mom just finished it Ooh. and everyone knows i'm an avid reader yes. and here he is dear harry poor harry he's been through so much and his book is called spare because growing up that was his nickname as mm -hmm. the spare to being yeah. the heir right uh to his older brother william and i guess you know there's a lot of controversy about this but one aspect of the public's opinion is that, you know, he shouldn't be having the right to tell his story and talk about his personal life as a former a prince. To me, why not? Interesting. He, yeah, you know, and why, why bring out anything dirty and why bring out anything public and why? Because he has a right to. It's his experience, right? Yeah, and it doesn't life. matter if he's making millions and whatever millions yeah. off the book. Um, if you want to write your story, you can. If yeah. I want to write mine, I can. And if his brother wants to write one, he can as well. Yeah. So this memoir is supposed to be very, very impactful about his struggles, his own struggles with mental health, actually. Yeah. After well, the and they were, mom. yeah, huge advocates of mental health um, support uh, when, when before he married uh, Meghan Markle, mm -hmm. um, he and his brother and his brother's wife Catherine had um, done a um, documentary, I believe it was, or at least a, a show uh, talking about mental health and why yeah. it was so important to them, and, oh. and you know why after the death of their mother they really uh, focused on mental health and improving so supports so. around it. So. Yeah, I mean, listen, he, he, look, has he made the decisions that any of us 
would make for looking in from the outside? Maybe not, but we haven't lived his life, right? Um, so. Looking great, not even knowing the story, I would be out of there. That Because I'm telling you right now that I don't think, even if I was born into royalty, that ultimately, if I met the love of my life and, and it was meant to be living yeah. in a structured institution such as that, I'm too free-willing, and he is too a free-will character <laughs> yes. um, and does what he wants to do, basically. And he's lived the life of royalty, and now he wants to get out there and live a whole new chapter of Absolutely. life with his wife, who he adores, and his children, and, his children, yeah. and and he's quite, he's left a lot behind, yep. but I think he's got much to look forward to in the future, and I wish him well. I, yeah, I mean, I hope that they they find what they need, and, and you know, I hope that he can have the life that he wants. And quit bashing Markle if you don't like her, uh, Megan, that's yep. okay, he tired, does. Tired, tired of it, but uh, you and I were at, a, were at a very inspirational speaker on the weekend. It was awesome. Yeah. I was blown away. Yeah. Tarek Haddad. Tarek Haddad, so uh, Peace by Chocolate, I, if you haven't tried his chocolate yet, Go now, mm. like right now, not right now, wait till after the show, but it's incredible. Um, you know, the story of a Syrian refugee who restarted his family uh, chocolate company in Antigonish, yep. Nova Scotia, and now speaking all over the world uh, about his experience. So they started the company in 2016 know. Uh, in Antigonish had previously had a company in Syria that yes. was bombed and, yes. and were uh, um, employing hundreds of people in Syria mm -hmm. in Damascus at the time and now in Antigonish, Nova Scotia employing 135 I think he said. He was so inspirational oh. and you know if everybody could be such a beautiful human being as this gentleman we'd have a lovely peaceful world out there and I mean that's the impossible mm -hmm. but just you know when people fluff off oh it's nice to be happy and spread peace and joy I don't see anything fluffy about it. Oh. I think that's what's missing is the yep. people talking the talk and walking the walk of spreading yep. happiness and joy and reaching out to other people and showing compassion yep. and bringing people into your life that need support. Yeah, and he also had young entrepreneurs up oh, on stage they were with so him. Funny and cute. Uh, part of the Power Play program, which yeah. is geared towards young entrepreneurs. Fantastic evening, and you know, huge kudos to um, to the school district, yes. um, uh, Anglophone uh, School District North, and mm -hmm. just to me. Amazing, amazing night. So if you haven't seen his movie yet, Piece by Chocolate, please do see that or pick up the book. I went over to Sobeys to look for his chocolate because you told me oh, it was there. God, it's so good. <laughs> it is delicious. I didn't find it and then I went home and ate my little stash that I had. Whatever works. But it was really good. And you know, for those young entrepreneurs out there oh. thinking about doing what you want to do in the future in the way of small business, go All for right. It. Well, we have two amazing guests right after break. So don't go too far. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Hi, and welcome back to Have a Chat. I am your host today, Veronique Arsenault, joined, of course, by my wonderful co-host, Judy Lojek. It's so fun to be here, back again in the studio. It's Monday. Yes, <laughs> it's Monday. We have two incredible guests here this afternoon, and, and really, we are so looking forward to having a great conversation with uh, them both. So um, I'm sure most people do know our next guest, uh -huh. but every every now and again might happen that somebody doesn't. Yeah. But um, So we have Jason Berry joining us today, and Jason is an award-winning producer, writer, Post audio engineer, all of those words terrify me. <laughs> um, and musician. Me too. <laughs> and musician. Um, collecting dozens of Canada's uh, largest music accolades, including Juno's, uh, Canadian Country Music Awards, uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian Music Awards, and SOCAN Awards. I, I'm stunned. We have a and superstar. Here. I know. And you have worked with, with um, music's greatest names mm -hmm. and, and people that are all, all over. You know the country, the the genres, and uh, all with your studios, Barry Barry Tone Studios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason Welcome. Barry. <laughs> How exciting me. to have you here! Well, I know we are so me. happy, yeah. and he's so humble. What can we say? He's like Tim McGraw. You oh, know gosh. that the song was written for you. Just Always a shorter too. version. Humble, <laughs> humble, humble, and kind. Well, and and like you know, I I I of course follow you on Facebook, and 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 amazed by what you do, but mm. you know just. For those who don't don't know you, also tell us a little bit about you and and you as a person. Okay, well I'm I'm a dad first, you know, yeah, and a nice. husband. Uh, uh, my wife Melissa and I have two children, Kate and Jack. Mm. Uh, Kate being the oldest and Jack being the youngest. Yeah. Uh, just a regular guy. I just like to live my life normal when I'm at home and just uh, do dad things and little fun guy stuff. You know, mess around with the tractor and yeah. still do wood. I try to keep myself. Uh, grounded by just doing regular everyday yeah. stuff and then when I'm 
when I fly out to do the uh, that other world stuff, then it's that's the hat I put on and I become that person. So. And you sure have and you sure do. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting though that you talk about it that way, that you keep those two worlds separate. Yeah, they're very separate. Yeah, nice. I, I love that because it's, it's uh, I, I'm sure it can become all consuming at mm. times. It can, if you let it, I think. It yeah. never has been an issue for me. I, I think just growing up here, you learn to be, you know, humble. It's just yeah, it's part of our be. culture, you know. We're just yeah. we're just easygoing people. So mm -hmm. even when I'm out there, they always kind of laugh at me, like, "Man, you did all this stuff. You should do more of this." And yeah. it's like, "No, nah, yeah. I like I like just being me." That just, is yep. so nice. <laughs> and to say you're a dad and husband first and family man, that that's very impressive. Were you musically inclined as a as a boy? I was. Yeah. Well, as we talked about previously, I was born deaf, and then uh, my family all play like every one of my family my brother I have six there's six of us in the family okay. five brothers and sisters and so um, they all play my dad was a player and they had their own little family band I'm the baby so I kind of missed all of that venture yeah and I'm, I'm far back you know it was kind of a planned uh, mistake maybe. <laughs> yeah, you weren't. No. No. <laughs> no I'm just kidding my mom calls it my favorite mistake but that's right a planned um, surprise yeah, so anyway, yeah, there was lots of music in our family and always like my brothers, my brother would play and my sisters all play and they would sing. So it just kind of grew up in that environment. So there's always music around. But born deaf, how does that work for someone that's now musically out there I and know, a star? That's strange. Yeah, so when I uh, first came into the world, I guess they didn't know that's what it was. They just assumed that maybe because my parents are a little older, that maybe I had a disability of some sort, okay. a learning disability. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my mom just wouldn't accept that. She just wouldn't accept it. So oh. she just kept pushing the doctors and she ended up taking me to other cities, to other specialists. Yeah. And they figured out the problem and it just turned out to be a hearing issue. So oh. a couple of, like I guess these days would be a minor surgery. They just put mm -hmm. tubes in my ears and okay. they fixed an eardrum issue and then Bang! I could hear, and Thank then I was off. Wow! Wow! Yeah. That's a big. That's <laughs> incredible for sure. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yes. Um, so, talk to us a little bit about your beginnings as a musician, mm -hmm. and how it's led you to where you are today. Okay. Well, I guess in the beginning, like most kids, I was lo like I grew up here. I'm local, mm -hmm. so um, I learned to play at home with my family. And then eventually we would go to these variety shows and what we call hoot nannies here, right? right? Yeah. Where you raise money yes. for things. Yeah. Who and hasn't so, been to a great hoot nanny? Yeah, that's the thing, right? So then basically, um, mom or someone would take us to these, and we'd get up and sing a couple songs. And then eventually, uh, I went up and played, uh, was getting ready to play uh, a song, and I was up on stage tuning my guitar. And there was a band called Amy Jardine and the Good Time Band. They're famous around here. Yeah, yeah. You know, really they, good. Absolutely. They raised a lot of money mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, I was just up on stage and a, a gentleman named Shirley Duffy, who's no longer with us, um, but he was the guitar player in the band, and he just said, just stay and play along. And then basically that was the beginning. Okay. So I stayed up and played and I was like, okay, being the, you know, the, the guy, I was like, okay, I'm going to just leave now. And they're like, no, 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 stay, they stay and play. It. Yeah. So then every weekend, Shirley would say, you want to play again this weekend with us? And I would say, I would love to. So then he would come and get me and take me to the gigs and we played gigs. So I ended up joining that band and being part of that for, gosh, most of my teenage years. As an instrumentalist and vocalist or one or the other? Mostly as a guitar player, okay. just playing with Shirley and just being his backup player. And then every mm. once in a while, he was a beautiful guy. He would, uh, oh. he kind of chewed gum and he would, every once in a while, if he figured I would know the song well enough, he'd go, which means I can take the solo, you know. So. And he could take his gum out. So I'd be, I'd be staring at him like, you know, yeah. is he going to let me have this one? Uh, yeah. yeah. So basically that's where I got it. And then, you know, as time went on, I was about 18 or 19. I just had graduated high school. I got accepted to college for electronics engineering. I was going to go. Mm -hmm. I was all set, have my books. And then I went to this club, a local club in town. Mm -hmm. And back then they had things called matinees where a band would yes. play in the afternoon. And you could go up and sing. So I went, up, I went to this uh, matinee, and there was a band playing from Ontario called Ron Griffin and Cripple Creek. Okay. And all my friends were like, let Jason up, because he's pretty good. Oh, you know? nice. So I went up and played with those guys. And then after that first little set, the lead singer came down and said, hey, man, you, interest, you want to join our band? I loved you. Seriously. So we just yeah. hit it off. And I don't know what, I really have no idea what possessed me to say yes. But I did. I said, yeah. And I oh. literally, I packed my stuff in a trunk and I 
put it on a train and I went to Sioux Lookout, Ontario. Oh, wow. And that's where I started. And then I just was on the road for years with those guys. Well, not years, actually, but about a year. Yeah. And then my life changed dramatically after that. Oh, my God. It's so (laughs) exciting to see someone, you know, I know lots of people that have, you know, gone along the way and have found that success step by step. But it was meant to be for you because now you're doing such huge things. Well, yeah, I try not to think about it that way. It's just, well, you are. It just kind of evolves to those things. It just feels like it's very normal for me now. It's, it doesn't seem, there's not a big departure from home to that anymore, I guess. But your world's always engaging with musicians. For sure. And now you're into other things too, like television. Yeah, Talk to us a little bit about the things that you're involved in Mm -hmm. and who you've worked with. Okay. Well, I guess, um, you know, uh, during the course of all of that stuff, I learned how to engineer and, you know, like an audio engineering. And then being a musician, I play on a lot of recording sessions. Mm-hmm. And I can give you the story on how the, all that happened. Maybe wow. um, I basically... I'm fascinated by <laughs> all of this. Oh, no. I think it's well, just incredible. Well, it, it's kind of a crazy story. So basically, I'm going to just start at the beginning. So when after I was working with that band from Waterloo, I ended up getting discovered in a bar playing with that band. And there was a guy named Charlie Major who was like a big oh, celebrity yes. at the time. And so... I ended up basically playing with that band. And We're dur- old enough to know who Charlie Major right. is. Right. <laughs> During the course of all of that, uh, I ended up working at a recording studio. Um, this guy named Dennis Shear, who found me at this place, they were looking for a guitar player for a new artist named Beverly Mood at the time. So he took me to this recording studio where she was doing her recordings. This guy worked with Tom Cochran and all these other oh people. So I ended up playing a little part for him just because all the session guys had left. Mm-hmm. And then literally it was like, hey, you busy tomorrow? You want to come in? And then that, like, you know, fast forward, you know, fast track, all of that story. Basically, I was in there doing sessions for all of these country guys, like Jamie Warren and Bedlam Hood and Lace and you name it. There was tons of them. Beautiful. Yeah, it was fun. And so uh, during the course of that, I took a big interest in the audio engineering part, which basically the recording process. Mm -hmm. And and just being there so long through osmosis even, I just picked up a bunch of stuff. So the, and then there was a thing called the Futures Program where you could, you know, the government would help pay the studio owner to yeah. teach you this yeah. sort of skill set. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up staying at that studio as an audio engineer. And as my whole career has been super lucky. So hmm. as luck would have it, there was a guy there, uh, Rick Hutt, who's like a really famous producer, and then Fraser Hill. So I ended up being the assist engineer for these two guys on a lot of sessions and ended up being like Anne Murray and all this Tom Cochran and all these all these people forever, you know? So um, that's how I ended up becoming an audio engineer, which led into, you know, eventually starting my own studio that won all the awards and Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I still have it. I brought it home. I took all of that gear and I brought it here. And I have a studio here now and it's great. People just fly in and out and we work together. And out of that same studio, now I do what's called post audio that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically just mixing television commercials and or movies and things oh like that. So God, I work, it's fun, though. Yeah, so I work for Disney and a bunch of those networks. Yeah, and yeah. yeah you name it. I, Talented, I, I Jason. I won't name them all. But. Talented. And you've also like been involved with some of the names like that, that I've seen in concert, like Taylor Hill. Yeah, Taylor so, Swift. Taylor, mm-hmm. Taylor Hill. Where am I getting that one? Faith Hill. Street. You yeah, were thinking <laughs> Tim McGraw earlier. No, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. So Taylor Swift. Yeah. Well, I love it. Yeah. You've recorded with them. So they've recorded in your studio. Um, well, no. We, with uh, Taylor and... Keith, Urban. We, yeah, we did a bunch of stuff um, during the CMT years. There was a, mm. a while where I worked for, I was a post audio supervisor for CMT for maybe a decade. Mm. So I looked after all of that stuff. And through that, I ended up recording those people. Mm-hmm. And it kind of stemmed, like some would would just be appearances yeah. and then some would be studio so guests amazing, as well. So. I mean, Taylor Swift and Keith Urban and Lyle Great Lovett people. and... All these names. I mean, yeah. and I love them all. I know. Yeah, me too. And it, but you know what I find fascinating though, Jason, as you talk. So y- you make it seem so easy and effortless, and and yeah. like it was no big deal. But the incredible dedication and work that you've put in mm. over the last number of years, Absolutely. right, to get you where you are, and to to have worked with all of those people, like. I always mm. laugh when people say, oh, so-and-so is an overnight success. Yeah. And I saw a quote, yeah. I, yeah, it was an overnight success. took me 17 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It took 30 years to be an overnight yeah, success. Yeah, exactly. You but it's, 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 yeah. it's amazing to see what you've done. But what are some of the singers or songwriters even that have really either inspired you or influenced you in, in, in the work that you do? Mm-hmm. Well, there's many songwriters that have influenced me. But I think because I grew up here and I was a fan of country music, 
I think Bill Anderson is probably one of my favorite. Okay. And he's uh, they, he was known as Whisper and Bill Anderson. Probably you guys would know that. Maybe I'm not sure, but he had a song called Still. And anyway, yeah. he's written a ton of songs for even the new acts that you see today. Like nice. there was a song that uh, Brad Paisley and Alison Krauss had that he wrote, and they were all hits. He's had hits since the 70s, you mm -hmm. know, and still currently still yeah. active. And uh, I played the Grand Ole Opry with a friend of mine, Dean Brody, who I work with today. I know, that's oh, wow. just fantastic in itself. Yeah. You know, what a great musician, no and deal. I'm sure he says the same thing about you. Yeah, yeah. well, we're pretty good friends. We've so, known so. each other a long time. Yeah. And so when I did the Grand Ole Opry, I invited Mum to come with us. And so um, she got on the plane and flew to Nashville with us, and we, she was on the show. And on that show was Bill Anderson, this writer. And now that, for Mum to meet Bill Anderson was like, Kind of like a meeting kid meeting Elvis. Justin Bieber. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time in my life, I know, she was kind of tongue-tied. She didn't yeah. know what to say. But anyway, so he's one of my favorite writers. Okay. There, there are many. Mm. There are so many. I, I hate to uh, leave anyone out, but there's probably stereotypically most people's influences in country music, like Merle Haggard and Waylon right. Jennings and all those people. Steve Earle. Willie Nelson. Yeah, you name it. They're all kind of yeah. my fave writers. Yeah. And, and then I wrote a lot with people in this country and in the U.S. But some like guys like Jamie Warren I started with. Uh -huh. I used to play on his records and we ended up writing. Cool. So I had my first number one hit with him called One Step Back. Something. And that was a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and there was a bunch. We, we wrote a bunch of stuff and they were award-winning songs. And he ended up becoming the most awarded independent artist in country music so in Canada. Yeah. Well, so, listen, mister, you're not going to get away without a little yeah. bit about me asking you to brag a little bit because I want to know and the viewers to know some of your accolades, some of your uh -huh. big moments for receiving awards, and I mean, there are many. Can yeah. you just touch on a few of the, the latest and the greatest? Sure. Well, I think, you know, like I've written a, a few songwriter awards, you know, with SoCan and with uh, the Canadian Country Music Association. And then as a musician, I've won guitar player a bunch of times and yeah. I was put in the as you know the CCMA Hall of Honor and it's part of the Canadian Hall of Fame now. That's you can, huge. You can go see us at the Canadian Hall of Fame and see my ugly mug going. No, mm, no, no, that's so hugely yeah, effective. Yeah. Wonderful. Congratulations yeah, on that. Yeah, that was cool. That happened this year. Ah. So that was kind of a neat little uh, you know, period yes. on the end of that stuff. And then uh, oh gosh, there's the guitar. A, you have a, a, tell us about your guitar. Yeah, so there, there's a company in Ontario called Sathara, and they built a Jason Berry model guitar. So there's two oh, models. Yeah. There's a studio model and there's a road model. So oh. one's designed to be you know yeah. playing live and all that kind of stuff. Oh wow! And then there's another one called the uh, studio model, which is more designed for in the studio and right. recording more fidelity and all that kind of stuff. Just but they're cute. very unique because they have benders. So anybody who's a guitar person out there is interested in that kind of thing it has like a b bender and a g bender which is it's like a mechanism on the guitar that kind of okay. does mechanically does things that a normal yeah, guitar doesn't do. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm like yeah, looking at it like it's in greek well, but i appreciate it it's it's, it's <laughs> tough to explain sing, but i am um, oh. none of the above oh. would you like me to sing with you yeah let's do it yes love to do a duet one day yeah. soon so yeah so that that was a very cool thing that happened in the last couple of years and then beautiful this the studio itself you know uh, yeah. Knock on Wood has done really well. It's yeah. been lucky enough to record all the biggest stars in the, both countries, and Imagine. even even Australian artists have flown in to record. And Jesus, yeah, it's beautiful. And you made time for us. No, I, I love mean, it. I'm really humble. This is home. I really, We're home. I know, but still, with your schedule and your agenda, and your I know your family life and everything, you know, to, to make time to share with us all of your journey. It's oh, just it's just a beautiful story. I, I really, I'm so proud here. of that's you. But anyway, yeah. So the studio one. Studio of the Year a bunch of times for CCMAs and all that kind of stuff. And there's there's been a bunch of awards since I can't even I'm scared to miss out like no yeah. I know but Song big. of the Year and stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's a quite there's a good little uh, collection now. There's probably over 25 or so. So you I'm yeah gonna, just before Vero ends it like so you play but do you also still sing a lot like yeah I sing I sing a bunch just. For ourselves, and okay. I never, I never really wanted to be the front person, the okay. lead singer. I got offered a record deal a few times nice. as a singer, yep. just not. Uh, I'm just not that person. I can't do that. Uh, yeah. No, you can have a bar for us. Doesn't float. Oh yeah, I play for you guys. <laughs> Doesn't float your boat, right? Eh? Yeah, it's not my thing. So in our last minute, because it's been that quick, oh, I'm sorry. Um, in our last minute, what is, what are, what's one of your dreams regarding your career going forward? Going forward, 
I think my next big goal is to win a Grammy. That's Ooh, the only one left. You got to do it. There's I'm only one not left. Gonna, you're going to. I'm yeah. going to do that. Yeah. Oh, and, and then record and work with my kids and, and just, you know, be a, a better dad and a better husband. That's, that's my. Beautiful. That's I it. Me too, <laughs> Jason. What a thrill to have you. Yeah. Thank um, you. So we're all done for this segment, and we had just an incredible time chatting with Jason. We'll have him back when his schedule allows, but. Don't go too far, everybody. We have a great second guest. You're going to want to hear this one for sure. Mm -hmm. um, grab a snack, grab a drink, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Yeah, bring your Grammy with you next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
and I've been acting since since that time, like in local and away productions. When I lived in Fredericton, and um, again, I'm doing it currently on the river when I can jump in. I have not yet, okay, this is saying a lot, and I'm sincere about this, mm -hmm. seen a better young actress Aww. ever. Wow. And I've been to New York, Veronique's been to New York. We've seen a lot of Broadway shows. I've been shows? to many, many Broadway shows. I, I, I just saw, I was there at Christmas time and saw more, and I can't get enough of theater. When I saw you and sat back, you just came out and you blew me completely out of my seat. That's awesome. You were Daisy, you were the lead, you were... Yes. Everything that I would would want to see in Broadway in New York, if I was to put somebody wow. there, as even at your age, it's amazing. You were perfection, and, and perfection is hard to come by. Well, I need to take some tips because I've only been in one play and it was terrible. So I need to take some tips from her. Well, I mean, Kate, your acting, your enthusiasm, your you're on point for every single moment of that long production. I mean, you were the the main girl. There were some amazing actresses in that play as well. But for me, yes. I could not take my eyes off of you no. and how vibrant wow. and incredible you were. So talk to us from your end of it, how it felt to be the lead in such a huge production. Thank you. Well, um, it was definitely an amazing, incredible experience. It was my first lead role or big part in any production. Mm -hmm. And it was so amazing to become the part of Daisy. I thought she was such an interesting character yeah. to get to... I think it was a little bit of a difficult role in some ways mm -hmm. because, well, there was certainly a lot of lines. Mm -hmm. All my, the lines, the Again, lines. I can't lines. even I was in <laughs> awe of your lines. I, I thought even. she's she must be extremely brilliant. To remember all that, but yeah. you are, I guess. I can't remember my name most days, so <laughs> yeah. I think we all have those yeah, days. Well, <laughs> thank you for being kind. <laughs> Thank you. So the lines, yes, just that alone. Yeah. And there was a lot of different emotions that I had to learn to play and to, well, to try to play them as best as I could because there's some that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. There was a part where I had to get really, really angry. There was a part that I had to be close to tears. Yep. And which took, I think, I try to hold myself to high standard to make the production and as for it to be as enjoyable for the audience mm -hmm. as possible and it was definitely different to do a part like that because I'm so used to being like a fun nice Sweet. innocent character mm -hmm. yeah. and Daisy was she still was but she had her moments she definitely had some anger management issues uh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. interesting so it was emotionally challenging the role to bring yourself to tears I mean I can how I get a there myself bit. as an actress is to think about something that really makes me sad. So mm -hmm. if I had to cry, I'd think about my dog losing my dog and the tears would come instantly. I have to put myself in a sad situation to make mm -hmm. the tears come. Mm -hmm. But, oh my gosh, you were enthusiastic and alive. <laughs> like, you lit up the stage. Thank you. That's amazing. It's, it's so fun for me to do, to be in that, like I said, be in that role and to just be on stage. It's... I immediately fell in love with it. And I love every second of being on stage, even the rehearsals, everything leading up to it. Yes, the lines are a lot, and mm -hmm. some of them are, are tedious like mm -hmm. to remember, especially because all the people after that, when you're a main, it is what they say is based off what you say. Exactly. So you have to get it yeah. They're right counting and on you. precise. Yeah. And there was no prompter, right? No prompter. Oh, my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had been there. It's like one time I forgot my line, so I was playing with a pencil. And this man said, my gosh, you were amazing to play. But what was with the pencil? I thought I just forgot my line, so yeah. I had to play with something. <laughs> See, now, when the play we were in, we actually did it as a workshop, and I ended up having my script in front of me. So I got oh, to read from easier. it. easier. Yeah, much easier. I just, I, I don't have the knack to remember the lines the way that you all do, which is amazing. So well, You I'm, nailed it, Kate. Yeah, I'm oh, thank you. I'm nailed amazed. it. Um, let's shift gears just for a second and talk about the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah. I, I, it was tough enough being an adult, um, you know, and, and all of our lives changing throughout the pandemic. But what was it like to be an active, outgoing teen over the last couple of years in the pandemic? It was definitely difficult. Uh, I found it it was hard because I'm I think of myself as kind of like a social person. I really yeah. love hanging out with my friends and doing things like that. And when everything shut down, it 
kind of took a toll that was, was different, yeah. and especially because everything shut down in my grade seven year, and that was right after the performance when I fell, like when I found out I loved it and yes. what I wanted to keep doing, and then I couldn't do any of that yeah, exactly. for a good solid, yeah. for a few years. Yeah. And, it was kind of sad to miss out on all of that. Yes, and do you find people in general, like your friends, your peers, even those that are maybe preteens and just a little bit older than you, um, your graduation, do you hear a lot of talk about mental health? Are they outwardly sharing their thoughts about anxiety and I'm having, you know, uh, like more outwardly as we're hoping Veronique and I to get more out there as far as speak up your truth and if you're hurting, tell somebody. Yeah. And if you need help, reach out. Do you find people are doing that? Um. I'm not too sure. It's still not a big discussion. So, no, they teach not. it in school, though, yeah. now, Good. and you learn a lot about it. And I think as being a teenager, you are already have so many emotions, yeah. and mm -hmm. mental health is, is difficult, especially as a teenager. Yeah. But I mean, also as an adult, too, but as a teenager, it's yeah. really, it can be hard. So what would you like to see as a community in place, not for you because you're dealing well, but with those who aren't. What would you like to see happen in our community for youth and mental health in particular? Well, I think what we're doing is, I think we have a pretty good, stable environment in my school good. regarding good. mental health. There's guidance counselors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think if people just, also if they took the leap and if they needed the help, yeah. like we can always get the help we need. Awesome, That's yeah. and your At parents and you're lucky you have oh, two yeah. parents which I have is beautiful parents. and yeah. grandparents, some mm -hmm. people don't have that network, they yeah. don't have that support, so you're just blessed and so for those kids like that are watching or parents that are watching, uh, if you don't have the parents there to support you and loved ones and caregivers, it's reach hard. out to a friend or somebody older. Well, it's hard, it's hard for adults to process their feelings, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I remember being, you know, around your age and everything was the end of the world at that point, right? Yes. No matter what was happening, right? I, I fought with my best friend, it was the end of the world. Yeah. You know, my boyfriend wasn't so nice or he was great yeah. or what, everything was the end of the world, right? I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, how do you balance a busy life like yours? Like with studying and acting and the other things that you're involved with, how Just do you find that? It's a very high academic average as well. Right, I'm amazed. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, it's definitely not easy to balance. No, it's I'm definitely sure. not. <laughs> but I, I try to prioritize things yeah. the best I can. Mm -hmm. um, it does take a lot of, like, Focus. in advance mm -hmm. planning sometimes. Are you really I also, organized? No, no me I'm actually not. No, me either. Yeah. <laughs> but I was you hoping know you were going to give me some I tips. Wish, there. But. but you know what you've got to get done. If it's yeah. a math test, yeah. it's going to come before acting kind of thing. Like you're going to put your lines aside, ace the math test, and then go back to it? Yeah. I regard my academic very highly, I think, because mm -hmm. I do intend to get down into university and Great. seek higher education. So mm -hmm. I think that's a very important part of the school environment, as, as important as it is. Uh, to have all this extracurriculars, yeah. just as important. And I also babysit too. Good. Uh, which is great. Dogs? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, can I get her to come dog walk? Wild dogs? <laughs> <laughs> dog walker? Would you like to become a dog walker, Kate? We have a new career for you. <laughs> no, but speaking of careers, I'm sure you will ace whatever profession you, you know, uh, go for. And at that, would you like to carry on, aside from, you know, being whatever your career choice is, mm -hmm. is still involved in theater, whether it's musically or just on stage acting or both? Definitely. Anything that I can do, I will be open. Yeah. Because, okay. like, if I, when I go to university, um, I intend to keep on doing musicals and mm -hmm. theater. And maybe this is a far-fetched dream, but I would love to someday be on Broadway. That you is my be. biggest goal. You are career. going to be, and I'm hoping I'm old enough and alive to be there to watch you and say, I know her. I knew her back when. She was in grade 10 as Daisy. You know what's <laughs> going to be amazing is that your dad's going to win a Grammy for writing a yes. song for you on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it we'll be? We'll have you both sit back then. <laughs> Dream big or go home, yeah. right? We no, I mean, <laughs> Judy and I, Judy and I have seen a lot of plays on yes, Broadway. Yes, a uh, lot. For about nine years in a row, we, uh, as a family, mm -hmm. so Judy is my aunt. So as a family, we went to New York every year for nine years around Christmas time, and we went to all these Broadway musicals and everything. So 
I absolutely, you know what, you're, you're going to get there. She is. I mean, if, you've, if you've seen her on stage, well, wow. And if you haven't, you're missing out. So you're no. hoping to do something in the near future again. Like, I mean, you want like yes. the secret of the bag, but you're going to be working on something within the next uh, little bit at your school? I certainly hope so, yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So we've got a couple minutes left. So that segment went by really quick. I know. <laughs> really quick. But um, so what is your favorite thing to do to have some fun? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'm just going to have to go back to acting. It's definitely <laughs> yeah. the thing I find the most joy in. Um, yeah. No, I did too. <laughs> that was my thing as well. Yeah. I also do like to babysit a lot. Yeah. yeah. And that it does help sometimes when I'm prioritizing uh, after the baby or the little guy I'm watching goes to sleep, then I will learn some lines or I'll finish my homework and things like that. You've got it all going on, Kate Berry. I know. I can't believe it. I like I said. I need some. I need some. I'm gonna. You're gonna mentor me. I need some tricks and tips <laughs> on how to learn lines. And her mother is an amazing fiddlist. I mean, is that really? what she's a fiddler? Yeah. And she's gonna be coming on our show one of these times because yeah. we want to showcase Melissa Berry. She's you know very well renowned oh uh, uh, as a fiddler. What a family, yeah. Uh, what a family is right. You should be so so proud of yourself and your mom and your dad and your grandparents and everybody. Yeah. She's very talented. And she's Ex amazing. She, well, she's an amazing mom. I can't wait to have her on. Um, so one last question. So is there a, is there a role that or a movie that you've seen that you would love to do like to reboot or is there a role on Broadway you'd really like to do? Ooh. Dream role? I don't think so. Uh, I do want to get more into musicals. Okay. I love acting, but I'm very, I like to be musically inclined and I love to sing. Mm -hmm. So musicals is really my favorite thing to do. Yeah. So I, no, not any particular no. role. I do like having I did like having, like expanding my... Mm -hmm. With Daisy? With Daisy, yes. Yeah. Oh, to learn how to do different things, yeah. too. Yeah. I Family can visualize you in that. Is it Footloose, the movie? Is it actually oh, called yeah, Footloose? Yeah. Yeah. It's called yes. Footloose. Yeah. I could see you in that. Yeah. I could see you in Grease, yeah. playing Sandy. Oh, yeah. I could see you in a lot of roles. Oh, I can't wait to see you in your next production. I'm really excited about that. So, and, yes. and when uh, when your next big thing comes along, we'll have to have you back. Mm -hmm. But listen, we were so excited to have you today. Yeah. You've done a great job. And, and you know what? It's high praise from Judy, but Judy doesn't give compliments lightly. So if she said no. it, she means it. No, I've seen a lot. You're it, baby. All right. Well, we have had an amazing show today and such talent in our region and, and all over the place. So uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week. From everybody here at Have a Chat, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.